Well, Chorister James Hodgkinson sang his heart out for the carers last Thursday night as everyone else was doing the clapping. Just listen to this. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Absolutely beautiful, I'm sure you will agree. Well, James lives in Wolverston, sings with the choristers of Canterbury Cathedral and joins me now. Afternoon to you, James. Good afternoon, lovely. Uh, so, beautiful voice, and I gather you've been singing pretty much all your life? Yes, I've been singing since I was about two years old, and it's been a major part of my life for as long as I can remember. So, are you missing it at the moment? Yes, it's really, really sad because it w- was going to be my last Easter as a chorister and I obviously miss that because the cathedral's closed and it was this summer's looking uncertain as well now because of coronavirus. So it's a bit strange. It's not the way I expected to end my time. So whose idea was it to head out? Because you took out, you just took your little speaker out and stood on the pavement, didn't you? Yes. It was my idea to go out there and sing for the carers because I felt that they're they're a very they're very important and they're doing a very very good job at the moment keeping the country going they're risking their lives to help us and I think anything we can do to help them is worth doing yeah is, uh, was there any reason why you picked over the rainbow well I picked over the rainbow because the song's all about hope and I think the real message is better things will come after coronavirus and if we're all hopeful we'll get through it. What sort of a response did you get? Did, did, did you get people in the village clapping you? Yes, I got people in the village clapping. I started quite early, so people were coming out while I was singing, which was really nice, and then I sang it again at the end. Oh, it's brilliant. And you're gonna do, are you going to do it again this Thursday? Yeah, I'm doing a different song every week, and <laughs> this week I'm doing either We'll Meet Again or Lean On Me. Which are, I guess they're not the songs you would normally sing at the cathedral. <laughs> They're not the songs I'd normally sing at the cathedral. Normally it would be the Magnificat, the Nunc Dimittis and Anthem and Responses. But I really like singing these type of songs. And I feel that music is all about engaging with the listener. And if I can convey a sense of hope and a sense of joy, that's what I want to do. Did you, did you ever do solos when you were with the cathedral choir? Uh, I've done a few solos in my time. Um, I've done the Allegri Miserere twice which has one of the highest notes choristers have to sing in the cathedral in it. And I've opened up two Advent carol services with the Advent Responsory, and I've also done various Magnificats and Nunc Dimittises. Because it's very different singing in a choir, but also singing on your own, isn't it? Yes. Singing on your own, you you kind of have a bit more freedom as to the speed you take it and the way you sing it. Whereas when you're in a choir, you're trying to blend together. What, what, what are your ambitions for the future? I, I mean, as a, as a boy, I guess at some point your voice will break, so you don't really know what your future has, do you? I don't know, but if everything goes well, I would like to become a professional opera singer in the future. Yeah. And I'd like to really share music with the world. Who, who's your hero? Have you got someone that, who's a, a particular hero of yours? Well, I really like the story of Alla Jones because yeah. it's reasonably similar with a chorister and then their voice changes and they can still sing and it's he's doing really amazing things and I'd like to do the same as him. So, so, and have you got any ambitions still for fun? Because I know you, I mean, you toured America with the Canterbury Cathedral Choir, didn't you? Yes, I did tour America. We sang seven concerts in seven states from LA to, to Summit, New Jersey, and we covered 1,400 miles, 14,000 miles by plane and coach. Have you got, have you got any ambitions left as a, as a, while you're still a chorister? I mean, because I think at the end of this year you'll be moving on with your education, won't you? Yes. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed, lockdown will end soon and the virus will be beaten. And we all sing end-of-year pieces, 
And I'd like to sing Hear My Prayer by Felix Mendelssohn, which is a long solo, and Stanford in G, which is another long solo. And those have been the pieces that up till now, I've never got to sing the solos in with the choir. So that's really where my ambitions are now with well, the choir. I, I shall keep my, my fingers crossed for you. In the meantime, you'll, you'll have to keep rehearsing in Wolverston instead. Yes. <laughs> so so you're going to be singing outside your house uh, this coming Thursday. And what is it you're going to sing again? Well, it's between We'll Meet Again and Lean On Me. Yep. And I think that they both convey really strong, hopeful messages. And especially We'll Meet Again, because hopefully we all will meet again and it can go back to as near a normal as it can. And I think that song really does mean so much to so many people having Dame Vera Lynn singing it in the war. So so what you could do is you could do Lean On Me this week and then because it's the day before VE anniversary the following week, uh, We'll Meet Again would work really well, wouldn't it? Yes. I hadn't thought of that, but yes. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> You've got a lovely voice and uh, I hope you get all your wishes for your career in the future. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, James. James Hodgson's, Hodgkinson. So uh, singing, he's singing in Wolverston. is a Canterbury Cathedral chorister, sings for the NHS. Lucky Wolverston, that's all I can say. Mm-hmm.